May there be stars in our crown when we get to heaven. God bless the soloist um, that was talking, singing any star in my crown. And before that, we had a piano voluntary by Godwin. And then we had the choir sing, Since I Have Been Redeemed. And they also followed that up with Wonderful Grace of Jesus before we had that soloist. Um, God bless our choir. Um, and God bless everyone for coming here today. We're happy to see you all, all our visitors and those that occasionally come to worship with us. We also extend the same warm welcome to our internet audience. This is Apostolic Faith. We are located at number 15, Penn Hill Road, and that's in Bexley, DA5, 3EP. So if you live locally, we'll be happy to have you come worship with us. Uh, what we can assure you is that God has said well concerning us. Um, we have God's promise to bless us every time we come together like this. So if you would like to come worship with us and share in the blessing that God has for us, we'll be happy to have you around. Otherwise, wherever you are located around the world, you can be part of this service this morning as you watch with us on, um, uh, this day on the internet. We will now sing collectively. Um, that will be from CGS 664 and Brother Mike Olabi will be our songs leader. Um, 664, our hearts are full of joy. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Ah.
for they that wait upon the Lord. sing before we are led in prayer will be 670 670 670 impatient heart be still what though it tarry lungs we will all sing the first verse sitting down and the second verse will be taken by all the our females sitting down and then all of us will answer at the chorus the third verse, all of us, including the orchestra and the organist, will sing it a cappella. We'll sing the third verse standing and then remain standing to be led in prayer. <laughs>
are gathered this morning before the Lord with all of our hearts, with all of our soul, with all of our strength, with all of our minds, Lord, to hear from Thee. As we listen to Lord, plant Your Word within our hearts. Plant Your Word within our hearts. Melt our hearts, Lord. Break our stony hearts, Lord. Remove the evil within us, Lord. And fill us with your spirit, Lord. Save us once more, Lord. Sanctify us, Lord. Fill us with the Holy Ghost and fire. As many among us, those who are sick, Lord, we call upon thy name, that, Lord, heal them all, Lord, because with thy wounds we are healed, Lord. We still believe that that blood that was shed in Calvary can still avail for us, Lord. Let it avail for us even right now, Lord, as we are struggling, Lord, with all difficulties, Lord, financial difficulties, school difficulties, family difficulties, all difficulties, Lord, we surrender them to thee, Lord, because you are the author and finisher of our faith. We put all our trust in thee, Lord. Lord, bless us this morning. Send us home rejoicing, Lord. Oh, bless the preacher this morning. Help him to speak to our knees, Lord. Speak to our hearts, Lord. And let there be difference in our lives, Lord. Bless the altar service this morning. Help us to meet you at our point of needs, Lord. As we come before thee, Lord. Bless the rest of the service. In Jesus' name we pray. Isaiah 41, 10. Fear thou not, Amen. for I am with thee. Amen. Be not dismayed, Amen. for I am thy God. Amen. I will strengthen thee. Amen. Yea, I will help thee. Amen. Yea, I will uphold thee Amen. with the right hand of my righteousness. Amen. 11. Behold, all they that are incensed against thee shall be ashamed Amen. and confounded. Amen. They shall be as nothing, and they, shall, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Amen. 12. Thou shalt seek them and shalt not find them. Amen. Even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee 
shall be as nothing Amen. and as a thing of naught. 13. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, Amen. saying unto thee, Fear not, Amen. I will help thee. Amen. 14. Fear not, thou one Jacob, and he man of Israel, I will help thee, Amen. said the Lord. Amen. And thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Amen. 15. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp treasure instrument, Amen. having teeth, thou shalt thresh the mountains Amen. and beat them small, Amen. and shalt make the hills a shelf. 16. Thou shalt find them, and the wind shall carry them away, Amen. and the wild wind shall scatter them, and thou shalt rejoice in the Lord. Amen. And shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. Amen. 17. And the last. When the poor and the needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue faileth for test, I, the Lord, will hear them. Amen. I, the Lord God, I, God of Israel, will make, sorry, I, God of Israel, will not forsake them. Amen. Amen.
make us a blessing. Amen. May Jesus make us a blessing. Amen. Let's go back to the Bible reading we just had and see the encouragement that God is giving to the people then and to us now. And uh, the first I'm taking is Isaiah 41 verse 10. Isaiah 41 verse 10. Fear thou not, Amen. for I am with thee. Amen. I remember once upon a time, my parents, especially my dad, always give me that word. Don't be afraid. Why are you always afraid? And uh, last Sunday, the children staged a program. And I'm among the things that Jesus delivered people from was fear. Amen. The little girl that demonstrated that thing really made me to remember my little age when I was very, very young. <coughs> the girl was really feared. What did I notice? What did I notice? When Jesus was even coming, and he's already saving people, the fearful was still scared. It was seeing Jesus that is going to deliver her, she was still scared and unstable. And until Jesus delivered her, before she became stable. Mm -hmm. And then God began to plant in my heart that this story of fear, these issues of fear is a serious thing. And I said, let me find out from the father of all fathers how he encouraged us about us not being fearful. And I find out from the father of all fathers that God Almighty, in Isaiah 41, he was encouraging everybody. Amen. Be not afraid. Amen. He used the word, fear thou not. Amen. It's an, a specific instruction to individual. Thou, you. In the olden days, they said thou, but now we say you. You, don't be afraid. Yeah. Why does God take all these verses from 10 to 17 to encourage people? Because fear is terrible. Mm -hmm. I know of different type of problem that we can have on earth that we need Jesus to wash and take away. But I never knew that fear is one of them. That the blood of Jesus is required to take away fear. And then reading the word of God, I said, wow, so fear is as dangerous as sins. And until it's gone, we will live an unstable life. But God doesn't want that to happen. So he brought this exhortation. Fear thou not. Amen. The danger in this message today is that if you may not listen and identify your fear, you will benefit nothing. But if you can take time for these 30 or 40 minutes to listen and identify your own fear, put aside, I've been saved and sanctified. Identify your fear. And then put that to Jesus, as he did for that children's program, it will take away your fear. Yeah. Yeah. On that note, let me start in a general language. What is fear? We are told that fear is a feeling that induced by perceived danger. Danger has not happened, but fear is already in induced. It's already nervous. It's already worried for what has not happened. A danger or threat that occur in certain type of organism, organism, which causes a change in metabolic and organ functions, and ultimately a change in behavior, such as fleeing, running away, hiding, freezing from perceived traumatic events. Fear, it changes who you are. It turns you to somebody else. I know somebody who was well educated, and this person will tell me, I'm still scared to speak English among the people. And I said, Look, you've studied so much. Say it the way you can say it. You can't say it like them. Say it the way you yourself can say it. And I took it upon myself, like, This is a challenge, and I pray about it, and God help this person. That this person can speak the English the way he can say it, and he's getting a good job with it. Amen. Fear can turn you to a pessimist. 
pessimist is someone who is afraid of things that never happened. He got a job, and he's like, hey, I may lose this job. You just got the job, and already afraid you will lose the job. He bought a brand new car, and he's already afraid he's going to have accident. See how dangerous fear is? He just bought a new house, and he's already afraid fire may consume the, the house. What a terrible thing. He just married, and he's worried the wife might leave him alone. The husband might go away. They are just married. Fear is dangerous. And thank God only God can take it away. Yes. Fear is not a good thing, but so that I will not confuse you, there are two types of fear. There is the fear of God, and there is the common fear of man. So to make you feel at ease, let me show you quickly the fear of God. In Proverbs 16, verse 6. Proverbs 16, 6. By mercy and truth iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord men depart from evil. The fear of God makes you to run away from evil. The fear of God makes you to be afraid to commit sin. The fear of God makes you to be afraid to do anything bad. The fear of God makes you to be afraid to hurt anyone on earth. The fear of God makes you to be afraid to do something that makes somebody to hate you. That is the fear of God. Proverbs 14, verse 16. The fear of God. A, ma a wise man feared it and departed from evil. But the fool rages and is confident. The wise man. May God make us wise man and wise woman. The fear it and depart from evil. Most of the time, when we, after weekend we come to work on Monday, our colleagues who doesn't go to church, you see them, they are talking about weekend and giggling. I just noticed that the thing that made people happy, that they giggle about, is sinful. All the thought, <laughs> and when you listen, what was making you happy? When you listen, you discover that you shouldn't have asked them what are they talking about. It's always bad, bad, bad. So, a wise man, what will you do? You go away from there. Go away from evil. That's what the Bible said. It's the fear of God. The fear of God keep you away from anything that is bad. In the book of Job, Job is the book before the book of Psalm. Verse, chapter 1, verse 1. I'm talking now about the fear of God. Blessed is the man, 1-1, one, one, Job, that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standing in the way... Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm... Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much. You see, this is one thing I benefit. When we are with the people of God, the people that want to hear us, it's a lovely thing. I can imagine a time when I would talk in the, among my people that are not in the church. Just keep on saying anything, they just keep on looking at you. <laughs> I, I ate food one day, and there was a big uh, something on my lips, and I didn't look at the mirror, and I was talking, they're just looking at me. They, they're seeing that. But thank God for the people of God. Yeah. We are all together, yeah. helping each other, yeah. and we shall make heaven. Yeah. Job 1.1. One, one. Thank you for that correction. No, now I'm reading Job, chapter 1, verse 1. Thank you very much. Job, chapter 1, verse 1. There was a man in the land of Oz, whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. That's the fear of God. That's the fear of God. The fear of God makes you to depart from anything that is evil. You fear God, not to make God angry. When you are in a place and you take it in yourself, hmm, if God should see me here, am I all right? You quickly run away. When you are talking with people and you discover that that communication, if God should come now, you won't be raptured. You quickly move away. That fear is keeping you from evil. It's keeping you from sin. That's the fear of God. May God give us that fear. Amen. May God give us the fear of God. Amen. But now, the common fear that we are talking about, which is generic. Everyone born into this world, you just discover that you find yourself in fear. And you might say, well, I'm not afraid. 
I'm not, a, I'm not talking, or we are not talking about physical demonstration that you are not afraid. There are people who are afraid, and because of the fear, they try to compose themselves as if they are not afraid. But it is the fear that is changing them to behave like that. If they are normal self, there wouldn't be any reason to show that you are, I'm not afraid. You are already afraid. It's a common thing. The common fears that we experience, which often sabotage all hopes for successes, are the fear of failure. Fear of losing power, uh, becoming poor, poor, poverty. Fear of poverty. That am I going to be successful? Am I going to be poor? And because of that fear, everybody keep on running and running and doing all kind of things. And you know what I noticed that no matter how much you have, you can never be satisfied. You never get to the full store where you say, yes, I have had enough. It's never so. Those who have money, they still hold it like that. They still hold it and keep it. It's me. It's my money. Yeah, it's your money. Look at the little children when they are born, the little baby. Allow me to do the mimic. They hold the water. Yeah, it's me. It's me. Go and see when they die. They drop their hands all over. You won't see any dead person who is holding the wrist. They open their hand. They surrender it all. No matter the riches, no matter the successes, certificate upon certificate, when the death comes, and unfortunately, nobody can use your certificate again. And that riches that you have piled up, somebody who doesn't care, who just, as usual, waste it away. Spend it anyhow. May God have mercy. So that you don't know that fear of what will happen when I die. It's why God is bringing this message. Because God will take control of it. Amen. God will keep you safe. Amen. Fear of loss of money. You have got so much money in the account that you can't even sleep. You sleep, you wake up as something, as they hack the bank, have they taken your money? It's a terrible thing, isn't it? Those of us who don't have money, we just lie there, we just sleep. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to worry if any money is stolen because we don't have that much. But those who have it, you try it one day. Withdraw 3,000, bring it home. See whether you will sleep. <laughs> You'll be checking everywhere if somebody has been there. If a cockroach moves, eh? fear is a bad thing. Yes. And God wants us to know that either you are saved or not, identify your fear. If you can identify your fear, and at the cross today, and you present that fear to God, it will take it away. Amen. And then you become normal. Amen. Life will be easy for you. Amen. There will be no pressure. Amen. You just live life the way it comes. Because the Lord God has spoken. Isaiah 41, 10. Fear not. Fear not. And I give us the title of this message. Overcoming your fear. Amen. You, me. Need to overcome our fear. Amen. When we were young and they bring us into the gospel to come and pray for salvation, the fear did not allow me to pray for three years. Hey, if I am safe, I won't have girlfriend. Hey, if I am safe, I cannot play football on Sunday. Hey, if I am safe, I cannot go to disco and party again. Ah, and I started counting until one day when I came, I went to the people of God. And I was discussing, and God opened the mouth of the man. I didn't talk about fear. He said, you are afraid. When God saves you, he will take care of it. Amen. You don't need a girl. He said, you don't need a girlfriend. You need a wife. Yes. And don't worry about girlfriend. Because those who are after girlfriend, they are never satisfied. They get the one, they look for another one. They get one, they look, it's never. But when you have a wife, your mind is settled. Yes. He said, don't be afraid. Come to Jesus. Pray. He will save you, and everything will be sorted. Amen. And God did that for me. Amen. He took away that fear. Amen. That was another fear. Who will I marry? I will look in the church. This one is not good. Ah, that one is too short. This one is thin. This one is tall. That one is fat. This one is this. Fear! Thank you. And instead of me to pray in the church, I'll be looking in. Fear is a bad thing. Yes. But when I surrender to God, thy will be done. Come to the altar, I close my eyes. Amen. And I prayed. Amen. He took away the fear. Amen. And he gave me a wife. 
And after which, I don't need to look at anybody again. No matter how beautiful they look. Because beauty is in the eyes of beholder. And my wife is, was, we is, and is still, and will, she will be beautiful for me. All the time. If you can deal with your fear, joy of God will descend to your heart. Fear is a bad thing. These fears cause people to avoid risk of any kind and to reject opportunity when it is presented to them. They are so afraid of failure that they are almost paralyzed when it comes to taking any chances at all. There are many other fears, apart from failure and poverty, there are many other fears. Fear such as the fear of a lost love, fear of uh, losing your job, financial security, fear of you might face embarrassment, they will embarrass me. Fear of ridicule, ah, people will laugh me. Oh. Fear of rejection, if I do this, people will not even want to listen to me again. Criticism, and any of those kind. Fear of the loss of respect, people don't respect me. I don't know what I need to do. I want people to respect me when, I, when I'm talking. People listen. Put that aside. When God said to us, said to everything, they will listen to you. I know of somebody who was so much afraid of the loss of her children. Even then, she cannot sleep. When she was sick, the problem is, hey, my children, oh, hey, if I die now, who is going to look after them? Are you the one looking after them? You are just a caretaker. Yeah. God is the one looking after your children. Yes. Either you are alive or dead, God will surely look after them. Yes. And this woman I'm talking about was so nervous and so uncomfortable until one day God spoke to her that, do not be afraid. Amen. Your children is God's children. Yes. God will look after them. Yes. And then her life changed. Oh. And then she took everything easy. And she lived longer than she thought she would die early. Don't let fear kill you. It's a killer. Don't let fear kill you. Fear is a killer and it's a destroyer. It's even dangerous than sin. It can mess up your life. Many of you are not safe today because of fear. What are you afraid for of? The Bible says the earth is the Lord. Yes. And the fullness yes. thereof. Yes. Everything belongs to God. Don't be afraid. Pray through to salvation. All that your desires, the Bible said, yeah. it will grant you. Amen. Even with salvation. Amen. So don't let fear push you away from salvation. Yeah. Say to God today, my fear is gone. Amen. And pray and get saved. Amen. And press forward and get sanctified. Amen. And all those things that is disturbing you, you are a very happy person, happy man, happy woman. And fear has turned you to become sorrowful. You're just going as if the whole world is on your head. You don't see that other people have problems. It's only you. You don't know what I'm going through. Ah, if I open my mouth, hey, if I should tell you what I'm, what are you going through? That has never happened. It has happened in the Bible before. God delivered them. He will deliver you. Overcoming your fear. Fear makes you to become lonely. Yeah, that's true. Because you are afraid, you will live alone. Ah, for how long? Deal with that fear. God, when he made us, he made us man and woman, he said, be fruitful, be multiplied, and spread all over the world. Why are you keeping yourself lonely? Mix with people of God. Feel free. Surrender everything to God. Don't let fear make you lonely. Look at your world as it's big. Why are you alone? Ah, because of fear. May Jesus deliver you. Amen. What does fear do to Christians? It changes your behavior and makes you a coward. Fear takes away your faith. You don't believe anymore. You just come to church as a routine. There's no more faith in you. Just come because if you don't come, they will ask you. Fear makes you to lose your faith. Fear makes you to lose your confidence and your trust in God. Fear takes away prayer life. Because you are afraid, you can't even pray. I've been praying, praying, self. What happened? It's the, it's the fear. The Bible says, pray always. And I say, pray. 
Fear makes you unstable, and it gives you doubts and worries. Fear makes you weak and undisciplined. You can't make decisions. I should do this. Uh, it is fear. Do what you need to do. Tell it to God. It will take control. Yes. Even if you make a mistake, yes. because you pray to God, it will cover you. Yes. Deal with your fear. Overcome your fear. The specific, specific fear of the Christians are the fear of salvation. If I am saved, will I do this? Will I do that? Will I go here? Will I come there? Uh-oh. Why are you thinking about your life yourself? Who made you? Did you make yourself? Didn't God know that you are alive? Didn't God know that what you are thinking in your mind, he knows and you want it? And the Bible said, I will grant you all the desires of your heart. So why are you worrying again? Why? Why are you allowing fear to kill you and make you miserable, make you sorrowful, make you unhappy? God will deal with your fear today. Amen. Fear of, hey, if I die, am I going to heaven or hell? The people of God have told us, pray you are saved, you will go to heaven. Yeah. Hold that one. Don't think about the bad one. The one is, I'm going to heaven. Huh? When I started to study in my life, they tell us that not everybody will graduate. But I said that one is not my mind. I will graduate. No matter what. I know I'm not clever, but I will graduate. Amen. And I go. And God made me to graduate. Amen. Deal with your fear. Yeah. If the fear is still with you, you are not yourself. I can tell you that. When you have fear, you are not whom God made of you. You are somebody else. Fear of marriage. Fear of children, fear of employment, fear of success. Am I going to succeed in life? If I'm going to church, I don't want to be church right. Oh, who told you that we are church right? We come to church every time. We all have jobs. Amen. 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 When you come to church every time, you can't be church right. Yes. That will make God to make your way easy. Yes. Come as many times as possible. Yes. You make yourself, you know, the, the people say the out of sight. When God don't see you every time, how will he remember you? Make yourself present every time. Be available. In the morning, come to the church. In the evening time, come to the church. I can tell you confidently, by his grace, it's over a year now that the church asked me to be worshiping here. It takes me three hours or five to drive down every weekend. And I do it joyfully. And I'm happy. Because I meet the people of God. Don't let anything give excuses. Ah, I'm living too far. Oh. Ah. Don't you know when you get the house that is far? Yeah. And the Bible said, forsake not yes. the assembly of yourselves. Yes. Who said that? God. So why are you putting excuses? He blessed you with a good house. And that become an excuse. I am too far. I cannot drive that long. Ah, may God not weaken you. Amen. May God not take the ability to drive from you. Yeah. People who cannot drive, they want to drive even 10 minutes, they can't. Don't use your mouth to curse yourself. The Lord will strengthen you. Amen. The Lord will strengthen you. Amen. It's a word of encouragement and a sustainment from God. Yeah. Fear thou not. Amen. I'm only echoing what the Lord God said. Yeah. Take away your fear. Yeah. Let us be as bold as lion. Yeah. The three Hebrew children, the king said he's going to kill them, but they have the boldness of God. They said, look, listen, king. Listen, king. If God will take us, will deliver us, yes. Oh, yeah. If he will not deliver us, we will go into your fiery furnace. Yeah. That is boldness. Yeah. Taking away with fear, dealing with fear. Yeah. When you have no fear, you are not afraid of death. Yeah. When you have fear, you are afraid of death. You are even afraid of living. Yeah. Everything is fear, fear, fear. You enter the bus. Hey, is that problem? You are eating food. Ah, I hope there's no poison there. You want to sleep? Oh, I hope the devil will not come and kill me. What are you going to do to yourself? And you are a child of God. If you are not, this message is to turn your table around. Be a child of God. Amen. Deal with your fear. Yeah. Overcome your fear. Yeah. And live life. The, 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 the people say that you walk tall. Yeah. When you have salvation. Yeah. When the fear is there, you walk bent. Good morning. Hello. 
Because the fear is there. When there's no fear, good morning. Yes, good morning. How are you? Hope you have a good day. May God deal with your fear. Amen. Fear gives you a clear speech. A clear expression. You go to interview, you are fidgeting. You still have fear. You don't tell God, I'm going to interview. Deal with that, my fear. You should be able to open your mouth and talk. Amen. Tell the people whom you are and your skill confidently. Amen. Don't fidget and stammering and losing your word. You are a child of God. Amen. You should be as bold as lion. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Amen. Overcome your fear, brethren. Amen. God wants us to overcome our prayer, our fear. Amen. Because fear is dangerous. In 1 Peter, how do we overcome our fear? 5, verse 7. How do we overcome our fear? 1 Peter 5, 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. In my Bible, I will use pencil when I put my name. For he careth for Michael. That's what the Bible says. Cast all your care upon him. Yeah. Him, the pronoun, is God. Yeah. It's Jesus. Yeah. Cast all your care upon him, for God careth for you. Yeah. What else do you want? Yeah. Romans chapter 8. How do we take care of our fear? How do we deal with our fear? Romans 8, verse 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage, Again, to fear. But ye have received the spirit of adoption. Amen. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Amen. God, when, you, when we talk about salvation, you know, some people don't really know what it entails. Some people do, really, do not really appreciate what is called salvation. Salvation makes you yourself. Amen. Salvation gives you hope when there is no hope. Salvation tells you that your way will be easy. Amen. It will not be difficult for you. Yeah. When others are struggling, salvation is telling you that you will not struggle. Amen. Salvation says that you will be faithful. Yeah. The Bible actually says that you will be highly faithful. Yeah. You will receive the favor of God yeah. and favor of man. Yeah. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. You can see that salvation is so great. Yeah. It changes everything. Yeah. And even when you are saved, and you are still with that fear. Uh -huh. You need to be saved again. That is why we cannot see that. I've been saved for one year, two years, 20, 30, 100. And then still you are afraid. There's no fearful Christian. God. Amen. The moment you are fear, you are afraid, we've got to do something about that. We've got to go back to Bethel, they said. We've got to go back to where we started, they said. We've got to pray over again, they said. We've got to pray for salvation again, they said. And when God renew the salvation in you, you become yourself. Amen. The Bible says that, read the Bible, Genesis. When God made man, what was the commendation? Perfect. Amen. Perfect. Amen. He said that men were like us, like God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Perfect. Any imperfection is not from God. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So believe in you that you are perfect. The way God made you, he knows why he made you, what you are, who you are, the way you speak, the way you walk, the way you do things. God is the maker. Yeah. God does not make mistake. No. He made you perfect. Yeah. Be happy in yourself. You can only do this when you pray again, when you identify your fear. There are examples in the Bible about those who overcome their fear. In the book of Luke, chapter 15, Luke 15, reading from 11 to 32, I'll paraphrase. It's about this young man, verse 17, Luke 15, 17. And when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my father's? Have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. How many children of God are happy, and you are sad? Hey! Many people come to the house of God, they receive power, they receive salvation. What do you see? Nothing. All you see is ah, that one is talking like this. This one is speaking bad English. That one doesn't know how to address one. This one doesn't greet me. May God open your eyes. 
If they don't greet you, greet them. If they look at you badly, say, ah, hello, my brother. It is me. How are you? Don't, don't interpret the negative. Interpret the positive. Yes. When somebody look at me down, I say, ah, you like my dress? <laughs> I know he was not appreciating my dress, but I'm not ready for the negative yeah. because I want to be happy. Yeah. God make me happy. Yeah. Why should I take anybody to make me sad? Yes. And especially coming to the house of God, the factory of reproduction of soul to make heaven. The factory of regenerations of life to a better life. Yeah. And you come to the factory and you go back, you are still going with your main life. May God have mercy. Amen. Overcoming your fear. Yeah. It is important. Yeah. When your fear is overcome, I tell you from today, begin to look at the mirror. Your face will be different. You will smile. Yeah. You will like yourself. Yeah. When I dress, I smile. I say, Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Because you made me what I am. And I'm proud of God for the way he has made me overcome your fear. That young man, verse 18, he said, I will arise and go to my father. And I will show to him, Father, I've seen against heaven and before thee. If you are still not seeing fear, it is a sin. Don't tell me you have been saved. If that fear is killing you, you are still having a sin in your hand that is destroying you. Forget about that you have been saved. You need to pray to be saved again so you can get free from that fear. That fear that is disturbing your life. That fear that is making you sad. Remember where you were before. You laugh <laughs> and laugh and laugh. How many times have you laughed? Today. Today. Have you laughed at all? Have you giggled? It is the plan of the devil. The scientist says it takes a lot of stress and to bring the veins together. To, to bring everything to look so morose. It kills the body, the system, the intestine. But when you laugh, <laughs> you release all that stress. Amen. You release all that stress. Amen. You feel better. Amen. You get healthy. Amen. So if you don't know how to laugh, tell Jesus to teach you how to laugh. Amen. When God saves you again, you will laugh. Amen. Not just giggling. <laughs> you will laugh, really laugh. Amen. And the more you laugh, my brethren, the better your health. Is more than any medication. I know some GPs are here. They will be able to confirm what I'm saying. Your laughter is better than any medication. So if anything is holding your laughter, that thing is killing you. It's giving you disease. It's giving you incurable, incurable disease. And that fear, today, you overcome it. Because fear paralyzes action. The most common reaction in fear situation is the, is the title of, I can't. I can't do it. Where do you get that from? What does the Bible say? I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Is that not what the Bible says? Use the word of God. Where do you come about, I can't? That's not a child of God's word. It's I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Even when you know it's not possible, that is what is called faith. Yes. Faith works in the field of impossibilities. Faith, as the people of God said, goes to market without money and is going for shopping. And it's coming back with goodies. That is faith. Faith gives you something that does not exist. Faith gives you courage when everybody is discouraged. And the only thing that kills faith is fear. Yeah, that's right. So you have to kill the fear. Yes. Amen. You know what? Scientifically, fear shuts down your brain. When you are so fearful, your brain will be shut down. You might be a very intelligent person. You want to be educated. You want to get this. And then you fail. You try again, and then you fail. And then you discover that you draw, you withdraw, you withdraw. And you become dumb. And you can't think straight again. And to do the exam again is difficult for you. And to try the business again is difficult for you. Scientists will confirm. When you are afraid, your brain drops down. It shuts down your brain. It shuts down your ability to think, to reason. Even when people are advising you, it doesn't come in there. 
People of God are talking, let them finish. I know 12.30 they will finish this song. I go home. The brain doesn't let you think. The brain is telling you there is too much. Because you are already full of fear. Don't let fear shut down your brain. You don't need to see GP for that. Go to the cross of Calvary on the altar. And tell God, deal with my fear. And let my brain open. There's no dumb children of God. We are all clever. Because we have the best repairer and the maker of our brain, of our life, as our father. And this father can do all things. Don't let fear mess up your life. Fear is not a good thing. And God wants to help you today. Amen. Second Timothy. One, seven. Second Timothy, one, seven. For God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Your mind will be sound. Amen. You will think aright. You will think clearly. You will speak confidently. You will express yourself without fear or worries. Once you have dealt with that, your fear. And Jesus is the one who can help us. Psalm 91. The book of Psalm 91. From 1 to 16, I'll just pick one first there. I think verse 1. He that dwelleth in the center place, secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. When we come to God, that is the shadow of the Almighty. That is where we overcome our fear. And it is only if you listen very well and you identify your fear. But if you tell me, ah, don't worry, I can tell you you are already afraid. Because fear changes you. Fear doesn't let you listen to the people of God. Fear has planted something in you. Ah, if you are saved now, hey, they will be calling you pastor. So what? Is it no better they call you pastor than they call you devil? It's better you live the life they call you man of God, a woman of God. That's much better than they call you, ah, he's coming, she's coming. Evil. Eh? God will change your fear. Amen. First John. First John chapter 4, verse 18. There is no fear in love. Yes. But perfect love casts out fear. Because fear has torment. Fear torments. Do you see that in the Bible? Fear has torment. A lot of punishment from fear. Torture. Fear, torture, slide. Fear can make you unable to sleep. Fear can make you to lose your appetite. Fear can make you to hate everybody. Everybody is bad. Hey, look at the way he's looking at me. Look at that one. Hey, I'm going. Fear make you to live lonely in the city of plenty. Fear tortures. The Bible says it has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. And God wants to make us perfect. Amen. So, brother, begin to identify. We are almost done now. Begin to identify your fear. If you can't identify your fear, that means you want to go back the same way. If you are the time, remember, if you have been said before, you know the way you used to pray that time. You know, you know. So what happened now? Because of the fear. I haven't got a job. I need to get my, uh, uh, what is it called? Mortgage. I need to pay for this one. Uh, my car. I need to buy another one. Uh, why don't you surrender to God? He will not let you become homeless. He will give you a home. He will not let you to be wondering about. If it is car, God will provide. And if it is a bus, you won't tie with joy. Those who are entering buses to go to their places of work, they, they don't have another head. The mat, what matters is for you to get to where you are going. He will never leave you hungry. Eh? No matter what, God will feed you. God doesn't want you to be alone. Don't make yourself lonely. Deal with your fear. Amen. You've got to overcome your fear today. Amen. John 16.33. St. John 16.33. These things I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. 
that is Jesus talking to you. That is God talking to you. Be cheerful. Jesus, God, he said, I have overcome the world. Don't let the pressure of this world kill you. I want to get this. I want to get that. I want to do this. I want to do that. Just say, thy will be done, O Lord. Amen. That does not mean that you must not have a program of what you want to get in life. Because in another passage, he said, the Lord shall grant you all the desires of your heart. You must have a plan. But don't let the fear change that plan. If you want to be great, yes, there's nothing wrong with that, but be great and be great for God as well. Yeah. As you are succeeding in your life, succeed for God. Yes. As you are working, win soul for God. Yeah. And you'll be more greater and greater and greater and greater. And your enemy will look at you. Look at that Isaiah 41 from verse 11. Look at what the Lord, the Lord God was saying. Your enemy, they will never catch you. Yeah. They'll be looking at you ahead. Yeah. You will be excelling. Yeah. You will be above them. Yeah. You will be head and not tail. You will be the boss and not servant. That is what God said. Psalm 27, verse 1. Psalm 27, 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Don't be afraid of your boss. Be afraid of God. Don't be afraid that if you get salvation, you'll be able to do what you are doing. You will do whatever you want to do once it is not sinful. If that fear has been keeping you away from getting salvation, I tell you, Amen. under the authority of the righteousness of God, you are the one killing yourself. You need to deal with that fear so that you can pray through and get salvation. If you have been saved and the fear is still disturbing you, you need another salvation. Because we keep on praying for salvation until we get to heaven. You need to renew. The Bible said, they that fear the Lord, they renew their strength, and they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not be weary. They shall walk and shall not faint. Amen. You have to renew your strength. Yeah. Psalm 56. Verse 3 and 4, I think. 56. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Yeah. That's verse 3. Whenever you are afraid, Trust in God. It will take you through. Psalm 27, verse 3. Though an host should come against me, my heart shall not fear. Amen. Psalm 27, verse 3. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. Amen. Don't say, ah, you don't know what I am going through. God knows. Yes. Everybody is going through something. There's no one who is free. Everybody has one issue dealing with. You might be looking at that person who has money, but when they tell you another chapter, you say, oh, what? That is how God made life. See the beautiful organ or piano that is playing and we love it because it's all black and white. When they mix it together, the music is wonderful. The life is good because we have problem. And when we get out of that problem, we praise God. We love God the more. We trust God the more. That is why life is difficult. So that you can come closer to God. When you run away from God, you make more of your problem. Matthew 10, 29. Matthew 10, 29 to 31, but I'll just take one verse. And not two sparrows sold for a farthing, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. There's nothing happened to you that God does not know. For us to come to our prayer, Isaiah 41, 21 says, Isaiah 41, 21, produce your cause. Say it, say it that Lord, bring forth your strong reasons. Say the king of say the king of Jacob. It is time for us to produce our cause. It is time for us to deal with our fear. Today we are going to overcome our fear. And the Lord will help us as we are singing. The Lord God will bless you.
want to keep smelling and disturb. Fear be gone. In the name of Jesus, we drop our fears and the feet of the cross. We pick up courage. We pick up joy. We pick up victory. Lord, please save this afternoon. Sanctify, O Lord. Baptize with Holy Ghost and fire. Deliver from fear. Give us victory. And send us home with joy and rejoicing. Thank you for answering prayers, O Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen.